let's solve problem number 3 on recurrences using substitution method here is the problem find the time complexity of the following algorithm this is the algorithm rec of n and we are required to find the time complexity of this algorithm if we observe carefully this is the recursive algorithm because rec of n is calling itself within its own body here we are calling rec of n minus 1 so clearly this is the recursive algorithm and we already know how to find the time complexity of the recursive algorithm we first need to write the recurrence relation of time for the recursive algorithm and then we need to solve it using any of the methods which we are available with we know one method to solve the recurrence relation and the method name is substitution method so we will use the substitution method to solve the recurrence relation of time of this algorithm as well and this will give us the time complexity eventually we can represent the time complexity using one of the asymptotic notations so now let's try to write the recurrence relation of time of this algorithm first for this let's remove this problem statement and let's create some space over here for the solution now we have the algorithm in front of us and now we are ready to solve the problem we are required to find the time complexity of this algorithm and we need to write the recurrence relation for this purpose let's now write the recurrence relation of time for this let's assume tn represents the time required to solve rec of n or the time required to execute rec of n now we can represent tn in terms of the time required to solve the smaller subproblems this means we can represent tn in terms of the time required to solve the base case and the recursive case let's focus on the base case first here we have if n equal to 1 then return 1 if it is the case that n is equal to 1 then we will simply return 1 this is the simplest problem to solve if n is 1 then we are within rec of 1 and this means the time required to solve this problem is t1 because we have assumed tn is the time required to solve rec of n so t1 must be the time required to solve rec of 1 if n is equal to 1 then 1 will be returned from this algorithm and returning 1 takes constant time similarly comparing these values take constant time therefore the overall time is constant we can assume the constant as capital c but this time we will assume the constant as integer 1 why because this is the common practice in many books and in many courses the common practice is to assume the constant time as 1 so this time let's assume the constant as 1 so t1 is equal to 1 this means the base case will take constant amount of time to solve. Now let's focus on the recursive case. In this else block, first we are calling the rec of n minus 1 function. And this will take t of n minus 1 time because tn is the time required to solve rec of n. Clearly, tn minus 1 is the time required to solve rec of n minus 1. Now, after this, we have this for loop. This is the first time when we are seeing the for loop in the recursive algorithm. And it is quite common to have the for loop in the recursive algorithm as well. And in this for loop, we can observe i is initialized to 1, i is compared with n, and i is incremented by 1 every time. And within this for loop, we have the printf function, which will print Neso is love as the for loop runs. How many times this for loop will run? We can observe that the first value of i is 1, the second value will be 2, then it will be 3, then 4, 5, 6, and so on up to n. So from 1 to n, there are a total of n values, and hence there are a total of n iterations. So clearly this for loop will run n times, and therefore this printf function will also run n times. Clearly, the time consumption in this case is n. Hence, the total time required to solve the recursive case is tn minus 1 plus n. Now, let us assume that n is positive. 
So if n is greater than 1, then Tn must be equal to Tn minus 1 plus n. But if n is equal to 1, then Tn must be equal to 1. So the recurrence relation of time is Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus n if n is greater than 1. If n is equal to 1, then Tn must be equal to 1. So now we have the recurrence relation of time. Now we are ready to solve this recurrence relation. For the remaining part of the solution, let's create some space over here by shifting this recurrence relation at this place. Now let's solve this recurrence relation. We know we can solve this recurrence relation using the substitution method. According to the substitution method, we must start from the recursive part. So, we know the recursive part is Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus n. This is the starting point. Now we can substitute Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus n minus 1. Because if we replace n by n minus 1 here, we will get Tn minus 1 in the left hand side, and in the right hand side, we will get Tn minus 2 plus n minus 1. So Tn is equal to Tn minus 2 plus n minus 1 plus n. I have replaced Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus n minus 1, and I have written plus n as it is after this. This is what Tn is. Now, Tn is represented in terms of Tn minus 2. We can remove the brackets and this is the expression so obtained. Tn minus 2 plus n minus 1 plus n. Now, we can replace Tn minus 2 by Tn minus 3 plus n minus 2 because we can replace n by n minus 2 here. So, Tn minus 2 will be equal to Tn minus 2 minus 1 which is equal to Tn minus 3 plus n minus 2. So, after replacing Tn minus 2 by Tn minus 3 plus n minus 2, we will get Tn equal to Tn minus 3 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 1 plus n. Tn minus 2 is replaced by Tn minus 3 plus n minus 2 and n minus 1 plus n is written as it is after this. This is the new Tn. Now we can observe the pattern. Here we have Tn minus 3, then we have n minus 2, then n minus 1, and finally n minus 0. Every time the constant is decremented by 1. If we are starting from 3, then we have 2 as the constant in the next term, then we have 1, then we have 0. Let's say we continue in this way from Tn minus 3 to Tn minus 4 then Tn minus 5, up to let's say Tn minus k. This is the last Tn I'm assuming. Tn is equal to Tn minus k plus n minus k minus 1. Because we know after the constant 3, we must have the constant 2. So after k, we must have k minus 1. Then we must have k minus 2. Every time we need to decrease the constant by 1. So after Tn minus k, we must have the term n minus k minus 1, then n minus k minus 2. In this way, we can continue up to n. So, this is the generalized equation so obtained. Now we know Tn represents the time required to solve rec of n. So, Tn minus k must be the time required to solve rec of n minus k. Let us assume rec of n minus k satisfies the base case. This means n minus k must be equal to 1. If n minus k is equal to 1, then we know the time required will be constant 1. So, Tn minus k will be replaced by 1. This is my assumption that rec of n minus k is the last function call. And hence the base case is satisfied and therefore, we must get 1 here as the result. So, n minus k is equal to 1. This is what I am assuming. Therefore, k is equal to n minus 1. So, we can replace k by n minus 1 everywhere. And n minus k over here can be replaced by 1. So, we will get t1 here. And we know t1 is equal to 1. 
we can eventually replace this by 1. But what about this term? n minus k minus 1. We can replace k by n minus 1 here. We will get n minus 1 minus 1, which is equal to n minus 2. And after opening the parentheses, we will get n minus n plus 2. n minus n is 0. Therefore, we will be left with 2. So, n minus k minus 1 can be replaced by 2. What about n minus k minus 2? k can be replaced by n minus 1. So, we will get n minus 1 minus 2. n minus 1 minus 2 is n minus 3. After opening the parentheses, we will get n minus n plus 3. n minus n is 0. So, we will be left with 3 here. So, n minus k minus 2 is equal to 3. And we know t1 is equal to 1. So, we are getting this summation. 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n. This is the summation so obtained. This is nothing but the sum of first n natural numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is the sum of first n natural numbers. And the formula to calculate the sum of first n natural numbers, as we all know, is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Therefore, Tn is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. We can write Tn using asymptotic notation. Here we have n times n plus 1 divided by 2. In the asymptotic notation, we know constant does not matter. So, we can eliminate the denominator 2. We will be left with n times n plus 1. And this is equal to n square plus n. Out of n square and n, n square is the dominating term as it will grow faster than n. Therefore, Tn must be equal to big O of n square. I have written the worst case time complexity of this algorithm, which is big O of n square. Most of the times we are interested in the worst case time complexity. That's why I have used big O notation here. Tn is equal to big O of n square. So, the time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n square. We have been told to find the time complexity of this algorithm and we are successful in finding the time complexity using the substitution method. So, with this, we are done with this problem and this means we are done with this presentation. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.